It's a beautiful morning at La Jolla Tide Pools and we're so excited to go exploring. Let's see what we found. The first nudibranch we spotted was this white spotted sea goddess. The species is found from California to Mexico and can grow as large as two and a half inches. The rhinophores are yellow or orange in color and the gills on the species are white. The white spotted sea goddess actually has a twin named the yellow gilled sea goddess. One of the main differences between these two species is the color of their gills. While the white spotted sea goddess has white gills, the twin has yellow gills. This is a great differentiation that you can use to tell them apart. The next nudibranch we spotted was the Prices Aeolid. It's a delicate looking species which is found in the Pacific coast from Northern California down through Baja. It's a small nudibranch usually reaching about one inch in length, though some individuals can be larger. Its body is slender and translucent and it's covered in rows of thin finger-like serrata that shimmer underwater. These serrata help with both respiration and in some cases defense. One of the cutest features on this species that you can see in this photo are the tiny black eye spots. They look like simple eyes, and that's exactly what they are. They're very basic light-sensing organs. They can't form clear images like our eyes do, but they're still useful. They help the nudibranch detect changes in light and shadow, which can alert it to movement nearby. So while they can't really see, it can still sense when something or someone is getting close. Our third find is the coxcomb nudibranch, a bold and beautiful species found along the Pacific coast from Alaska down to Baja. It's one of the larger nudibranchs in this region, growing to be about three inches long. The species gets its name from its tall wavy ridge along the back that resembles a rooster comb. That ridge is made up of small rows of serrata which are used for respiration and defense. Each serrata is tipped with a beautiful splash of color, which really pops against the more muted tones of the body. These colorful tips give the coxcomb nudibranch a striking, almost glowing appearance when it's moving through the water. At the front, you can spot its two distinct rhinophores, these antenna-like structures that help detect chemical cues in the water. They play a big role in helping the nudibranch find food and navigate through its surroundings. Altogether, it's a dramatic and beautiful species that's hard to miss once you see it. Next up is the McDonald's Dorid, a bright and tiny nudibranch found along the Pacific coast, mostly from central California down to Baja. It's a small species, usually less than an inch long. Its body is a clean, bright white scattered with bold orange spots along the top and sides. The vibrant contrast makes it really stand out, even though it's easy to miss due to its small size. It also has orange-tipped rhinophores and gills, which match the spots and give it a very coordinated look, almost like it's dressed up. Next up is the Porter's Dorid, one of my personal favorites because of its vibrant coloration. This species typically grows to be about one and a half inches long. Its entire body is striking blue, which contrasts beautifully with the bright yellow lines on its mantle. The bold color combination really makes the species stand out in its environment. Here we can see its oral tentacles, these small fleshy extensions around the mouth help it sense its surroundings, picking up chemical cues in the water to detect food or nearby danger. One of the most eye-catching species along the California coast is the Hopkins Rose Nudibranch. It's found among cracks or near pink encrusting bryozoans, its primary food source. The species is usually around an inch long. Its body is a bright pink bubble gum with a densely packed serrata covering its back. These serrata help with breathing. The overall appearance really does resemble a tiny sea rose, especially when it's fully extended and moving. However, if you ever see this nudibranch out of water, I tend to think it looks like a chewed up piece of bubblegum. Let me know what you think. Another beautiful find is the spotted dorid. It ranges from Alaska down through Baja, California, and is one of the more commonly seen dorids along the Pacific coast. These nudibranchs can grow to be about two inches long, making them a bit longer than most of the others in this lineup. The body is usually creamy white or pale yellow with a soft velvety texture. Near the back is a fluffy cluster of gills which are used for breathing and can retract for protection. The spotted dorid often feeds on sponges and its coloration can actually help it blend in with the encrusting surfaces it lives on. Subtle but super elegant up close. Next we have a Monterey dorid. It usually grows to be about one and a half to two inches long and feeds on encrusting sponges. Its body is typically a golden yellow or orange, sometimes with a translucent appearance. It's covered in tiny opaque dots. These dots are actually clusters of gland cells that may help deter predators. Some individuals also have darker brown or black markings scattered across the mantle. The Mexican skirt dancer is absolutely mesmerizing to watch in motion. This is a type of marine flatworm found from the Gulf of California down through Central America.
The paddle worm is a striking marine worm, typically growing to be about 6 to 8 inches long. It has a long slender body that is covered in colorful paddle-like appendages called parapodia. These parapodia are not only beautiful, but they also play a crucial role in the worm's movement and respiration. The file clam is a relatively rare bivalve with only 143 observations on iNaturalist, making it a fascinating find for those lucky enough to spot one. As a filter feeder, the file clam captures plankton and organic particles with its gills, contributing to the health of the surrounding ecosystem. The Pacific purple sea urchin is usually a common sight, but not always easy to spot when they're especially this small. We encountered an incredibly tiny individual and I had to zoom in fully just to get a good shot. The painted wentil trap is a fascinating marine snail, most often seen with a clean white shell that spirals upwards in an elegant twist. That's all for today's finds. Thank you so much for watching and like and subscribe for more content like this.